Hello again, our most developed student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our part two of mechanical drives and this is engineering science and two. And I've already looked at part one where I did a past paper and I will encourage you to go through that paper so that you can understand this lesson. Also, if this is your first time coming in contact with this channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to our channel as well as ensure that the notification bell is turned on so that you are notified every time there are new videos that we're posting and then what happens is whenever we post a video youtube is going to send you a notification that there is a new video from the 24 minute lessons and also guys i will encourage you to share this channel with your friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit remember sharing is caring now to go straight to the um question uh let us look at a few things before the question just a few reviews um that is always important especially when you come to the section of mechanical drives i will encourage you number one to take note of your data or your information sheet and these values you need to familiarize yourself with now values such as the density of water let me just underline them are most important especially in such sections the whenever you're dealing with um pressure as well as let me see gravitational acceleration is also an important value which is 9.8 you might need it at atmospheric pressure this is also important you will need that and anything that they want usually they give information uh, on this but i will revert back to it whenever we need that and the other important information that you need to know is your formula sheet it is very 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 important you need to familiarize yourself with the formulas that involve um, mechanical drives but i'm going to come back to this uh, section whenever we need the formulas but as i say those two uh, documents the information sheet as well as your data are very very important for whenever you're answering the questions on mechanical drives now let us look at a second question here um, that deals with mechanical drives as we said it is question number five in your engineering science and two so i took this as one of the previous papers uh, you will all, some students always wonder what does this funny science usually mean in a paper well I think is mainly for marking the paper as the authentic paper for that particular exam so as you can see it here it shows that it is one of the previous papers that was written now let us look at question 5.1 in this case says give two advantages of chain drives so we're talking about chain drives here over bell drives and you need to have uh, gone through this it is very important for you to know such theory because these questions are questions that can give you uh, good marks now whenever we talk about chain drives the reason why they designed chain drives after the bell drives remember in, in in at the beginning they had bell drives but now they had some weakness which made them to come up with some chain drives and the major weakness was slip so that is coming out of the pulleys for it to slip so it says give two advantages of chain drives now the advantage of the chain drive is what was solving the disadvantage of the bell drive so in the chain in the bell drives you find that there was slip but what about in the chain drives there is no slip so the answer that we need is the one for the chain drive not for the bell drive so the advantage of the chain drive is that number one they do not have slip so no slip number two is because um, they need uh, in a way they last longer you can say they are durable you can say they last longer anything that shows that um, in a way they take a longer time to wear off but now if they ask the opposite question to say what is the disadvantages of bell drives you're going to say the opposite to say they um they are not durable the opposite of that so that is what i want you to just take note of these questions are more common and it is very important for you to 
uh, master some of this theory but uh, let us move on to the next question and that is question number 5.2 now 5.2 this this was two marks that is 5.1 let us look at 5.2 now 5.2 then is a question says a flat belt drive has an effective tension force of 350 newtons the belt has a linear velocity of 15 meters per second the driver pulley has a diameter of 100 millimeters and the driven pulley has a diameter of 500 millimeters with a slack side force of 210 newtons so they just gave us a bit of information so your duty now is to convert this information into some form of a sketch now if i do that let me say um because my page is too long let me come up with a new page in this case and then try to convert whatever they gave us into some diagram sketch so what they are saying here they said a flat bell drive so this is a bell drive and i just want to sketch that so that it can make some sense to you guys so what we have if i can have my uh so we have got the first pulley in a way and we have the second pulley so how do you link this remember the first one we call it um okay let me just finish up the whole diagram so that it can make sense so what we have we have a belt like that and you just need to be more accurate on your side it's just a rough sketch and then from there you have a stretch side so now we call this side this leg side and we call this side the tight side all right just a few info there now the tight side we refer it as t1 so this is our t1 and then the slack side we refer it as t2 which is um, the slack and a few things also you need to define that which is our d1 which is diameter one and that is our d2 which means it's diameter for the um, pool number two and then how do we go about the driver and the driven the smaller one is the one doing the which, which is the driver and the bigger one is the one which is driven this is the information that you definitely need to put across so that you can be able to know what they are referring to in this statement it says a flat belt drive has an effective tension force of 350 newtons so let's leave that information for now but now it moves on to say the belt has a linear velocity that's the first information one we must put in there the linear velocity of 15 meters per second so how do you go about if this is the direction of rotation of rotation so so this is how the belt is moving so if they say linear velocity you are looking at a straight line like this this is the linear velocity so if it is going that direction it is also going uh, this direction so we're talking about linear velocity which is v in this case they are saying the linear velocity is equal to 15 meters per second okay so that is the information we're given I'm just populating the information on the diagram and then moving on it says the driver pulley has a diameter look at the statement the driver so we are looking in this case at the driver pulley it has a diameter of 100 millimeters so if you come back to the diagram this is our driver pulley and this driver pulley has a diameter of 100 millimeters so you need to convert the 100 millimeters into meters now sometimes students get confused on how to convert now milli means divide by a thousand 
that's what it means and then if you are having nano okay let's start from milli actually you get micro micro just to put it properly milli means multiply if i can say milli means multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 and then if they say micrometers it means multiply by 10 to the power negative 6 if they say nanometers it means multiply by 10 to the power negative 9. now coming back to the positive side if they say kilometers kilo means multiply by 10 to the power 3 and then if they say mega meters means multiply by 10 to the power 6 so you must know what um this milli micro so so here if they say uh, 100 millimeters now when you say milli as i said you multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 so you are saying 100 times 10 to the power negative 3 which is same as saying 100 divided by a thousand so this is like you're saying 100 over 1000 but you can use your calculator just to simplify that to say what is um 100 times 10 to the power negative 3 you're going to get 1 over 10 which is 0 comma 1 which is same as 100 divided by a thousand see you get same same answer so what we have now we are saying the driver d1 here is equal to 0 comma 1 meters and then they are saying the next one the, the driver pulley that was um 100 meters and says the driven pulley now we're looking at the driven the driven pulley has a diameter of 500 millimeters it's the same thing you divide 500 by a thousand if you divide by a thousand you are going to get 0 comma 5 meters you can test that with the calculator so here what i have is my d2 uh just so my d2 is equal to 500 millimeters which is 0 comma 5 meters remember you need to work in si units which is meters that's why your velocity is in meters per second all right looking at the information then it says with a slack side of with a slack side force of 210 newtons so now they're talking about force in this case the moment they say force you must remember when we're dealing with belt we're talking about tension and that tension is t and then they say it's slack side and if you go to the diagram we mentioned there is the slack side and the tight side now the slack side there they told us is equal to which is our t2 slack side force and they are saying the slack side is 210 so what they are saying is t2 is equal to 210 newtons that is the slack side so when they're talking about force they are talking about tension in that case so we are not told about t1 they haven't given us anything there so now let's look at the question now it says we need to calculate the following we are looking now at 5.2.1 it says the power transmitted by the belt drive so we're looking for the power in this case as i said your formulas that's way now you need to know your formulas so if we go to to our formula sheet and we look at the formula that connects power and the information given you can see that this is the formula that connects uh power then it says power is fe times v where fe is the effective force now if you look at the question actually they did give us that first statement that i said i'll come back to it, it says a flat belt has an effective tension force so you see where they say effective tension force that is my fe so here fe is 350 newtons so now if i come back to the formula which says power is fe times v or dot v so i can use that formula here to say if we start answering the question that is question 5.2.1 to say power is equal to f e dot v in in other ways you're saying f e times v 
now we are told that fe is 350 newtons so which is equal to uh, 350 times now the velocity they told you v is 15 meters per second that is the linear velocity so it's simple multiplying these uh, numbers and you can see actually that it was not a difficult question here so if you use a calculator then to uh, simplify that part you are going to find that it's uh, 350 times 15 it gives us 5250 which is 5250 now units are very important without units they will penalize you uh, some marks now power is always measured in watts that is how you can give your answer if you want since you can see that um, it's more than it's 5000 some they prefer to leave their answer uh, in smaller numbers you can divide by 1000 so if you say 5250 you divide by 1000 why am I dividing I'm converting to kilo now it is 5,25 so you'll get that this is 5,25 kilo watts remember if I'm converting converting from watts to kilo I divide by thousand but if I'm moving from kilo to watts I multiply by 10 to the power 3 which is a thousand so that was 5.2.1 let's move on to the next question which is 5.2.2 .2. um we are done here now 5.2.2 says uh, we need to calculate the following the ro the rotational frequency of the, of the driven pulley now rotational frequency now that word rotational frequency is n so the symbol for that is n but they are saying of the driven pulley so if i come back here to my diagram and you will notice that the d1 will give me the rotational frequency of n1 and the d2 will give me the rotational frequency of n2 by rotational frequency we're saying as you can see we did mention the direction of rotation so that is where we get our n1 and n2 as the rotational frequency now if they're saying we need to calculate the rotational frequency of the driven pulley so I'll come here to say they are focusing on the driven pulley as you can see this is my driven pulley and they want my n2 if I go to my formulas the formula that connects n is this formula where it says v is pi dot d dot n that's the formula that talks about n so if I take that formula and say v that is 5.2.2 so we are saying v is equal to pi dot or you can say times uh, d dot n so that's what we're given so if i can make it more relevant in this case it will be v is equal to pi d2 and n2 because i'm talking about um in the driven here which is the uh, I, I denoted it by uh, the subscript 2 to there so now is to put the information that we're given we are already given v v is 15 meters so you are saying 15 is equal to pi times the d2 which they gave us there is our d2 which is 0 0.5 times the n2 is what we are looking for the rotational frequency there so how do you now remain with n2 since we are multiplying we divide by what we want on both sides so what is it that we don't want we don't want pi times 0 0.5 that's what we don't want but what we do on the left we do on the right pi times 0 0.5 we don't want the pi that's why you're dividing opposite of multiplication is division as well as that so this then will give us in this case our n and if our n2 if we use the calculator in this case we're going to say 15 over pi times uh, 0 0.5 and then it gives me 9,549 to two decimal places as i say guys your calculator can run round off for you you say shift setup then you look at number six fix 
and then you can fix it to two decimal places which is 9.55 so my n2 is 9.55 now the important thing next is to leave the units of n2 how do you uh, leave your units now since you see I'm using a smaller n they said rotational frequency remember the question says we are calculating the rotational frequency so we're going to say it's easy already 9.55 r for rotation let me use a different marker here to say r for rotation per watt it's either you are measuring in minutes or in seconds now since our velocity is already in seconds it means we are also going to leave our answer in rotation per second but now we have this formula that can convert rotation per seconds to rotation per minute let me look at that formula yes there it is look at this formula which says n the smaller n is equal to bigger n over 60 if you use that formula here to say n the smaller n here so it will be like saying it's n is equal to bigger n over 60 if I'm making it relevant, then it will be n2 is equal to bigger n2 of 60. So we know our n, the smaller n2, which is 9,55, is equal to the bigger n over 60. And you know what to do? To get rid of this 60 is dividing, you multiply. See, that's how you get rid of the 60. But what you do on the left, you must also do on the right. So in instance, when you're converting from rotation per seconds to rotation per minute you are multiplying by 60 so if we take that and say 9.55 times 60 is equal to 573 so we have got rotation per minute now this becomes then our n2 so you can leave uh, your answer two ways to say n2 is equal to 573 rotation per minute that is the way if you want to leave it in rotation per minute or the one that i will prefer in this essence is this one which is 9.55 rotation per seconds because i don't need to convert that sometimes the question will instruct you to leave it in rotation per seconds or in rotation per minute then it is up to you now let us move on to the next question 5.2.3 it talks about um, 5.2.3 says calculate the following the rotational frequency of the driver pulley so now we're looking at the driver pulley it's a similar question but now it is focusing on the driver pulley so we are looking at the driver but the information doesn't change in this case we are looking at 5.2.3 rotational frequency same, same same formula v is equal to pi dot d dot n but now since we're looking at the driver we are using the subscript one the velocity does not change it maintained at 15 because its linear velocity is equal to pi times our d1 they told us it's 0 comma 1 remember the information times now they want n1 you also do the same divide by pi times 0 comma 1 divide by pi times 0 comma 1 what you don't want when it's multiplying you just divide and then with that it is going to give us in this case our n1 so our n1 is equal to because I'm left now with my n1 that's why I can write it to say n1 you do the same you are dividing in this case um, if I say 15 divided by pi times 0 comma 1 it gives me 47 comma 7 for 6 remember your calculator can round off for you by saying shift set up 6 and 2 decimal place which is 47 comma 75 now remember the units again i said you are measuring since your velocity rate is in seconds is rotation since it's rotational frequency but now you are measuring in seconds if you want to convert it to um rotation per 
minute that's when you use the picker n so whenever you're using the picker n you're measuring now in minutes so you multiply that 47,75 like they said you multiply by 60 as we did uh, previously which is 2865 but remember the units are changing now to rotation per minute it's up to you how you want to leave it but it was not necessary to convert that but I'm just showing you sometimes some questions will want you to leave it in minutes instead of seconds now that is the part but I just want to show you something again on 5.2.3 you have an option of doing it like this this question can be done in two ways um, let me just do this to say remember we said our V is equal to pi dn that's our V now if you check carefully we used the same formula here that was V 15 was used and we use the same, same formula here 15 was used so in essence it means this side is equal to that side so what you're saying is since 15 was used you can say pi times d1 times n1 is equal to pi times d2 times n2 that's how you can convert that I mean it's the same linear velocity then it helps you to find whether you want n1 or d1 so we're looking at this case for n1 so remember what you don't want when it's multiplying you divide you divide by pi times d1 on both sides pi times d1 so when you do that divide by pi then you are left with n1 the pi will also cancel out then you are saying d2 which we know our diameter to it was 0 0,5 and we use that 0 0,5 times n2 the smaller one remember I'm working with smaller n2 which is 9,55 we calculated that over d1 now the smaller d d1 was 0 0,1 in that case so you can use that formula also it should give us the same answer so if you look at n1 in this case using the alternative method it's 0 0.5 times 9.55 and this is over 0 0.1 if you press sd it's 47.75 remember it's a rotation per second and if you look at this answer and you look at what we got previously you can see that it's actually the same answer that they're getting so in a way sometimes some information that they can give you they will give you information such that you are not able to use uh, the first formula so you need to then rely on the kind of this formula that I just used it's up to you guys but that's what I wanted to show you so that was that you get six marks it's a good good six marks now let us move on to question 5.3 Question 5.3 says a crane has an effort of 9 kilonewtons. It lifts a load of 15 kilonewtons with a, an effort distance of 2.4 meters and a load distance of 750 millimeters. Few things here, such things as kilo newtons, kilonewtons, meters, and millimeters. You need to know how to maintain the units now if they say kilo as i said the word kilo means multiply by 10 to the power 3 and then we say the mega mega means multiply by 10 to the power 6 so kilo multiply by 10 to the power 3 but what about milli millimeters means multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 see the difference there if it's kilo you multiply by 10 to the power 3 because kilo is a bigger number but milli means multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 so that is how you convert millimeters to meters you must know the SI units so they've given us this information they're saying a crane has an effort of that it lifts a load of that with an effort distance of that and a load distance of that calculate the following the mechanical advantage in that let's put this information together if I can erase here also just to put this information also together to say 
they gave us an effort so if i write here and say the effort which we can use the the letter e is equal to 9 kilonewtons which is 9 times 10 to the power 3 newtons that's how you convert to newtons and then they gave us uh, it lifts a load the load is 15 kilonewtons so here the load which i use l is 15 times 10 to the power 3 newtons and then the next one says with an effort distance see that of 2.4 meters so the effort distance i'll pause there and say here is our effort distance now the effort distance i'll use the letter s e s for distance but e for effort so s e which is effort distance is 2.4 meters and then what we have is and the lot distance of 750 millimeters and then we're saying here lot distance now lot distance we're going to use the word s but for l meaning the distance for the load is 750 they say it millimeters you need to convert it already which is 750 times 10 to the power negative 3 meters now it's up to you you can already simplify so long so that it automatically you start working in um, meters so it will be 750 you can divide by 1000 or as I say do like what I do is to multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 it's the same as dividing by 1000 which is 0 0.75 So this is the information given, guys. Now the next question says, calculate the following. What is the first part? 5.3.1, the mechanical advantage of the crane. Every question, first thing is to check, is there a formula for that? So the formula for mechanical advantage, you can use, you need to familiarize yourself with this formula sheet. So there is the formula for mechanical advantage there. You know, I also don't know some of the abbreviation, the HV, but here MA stands for mechanical advantage. L is the load, E is the effort. So MA is L over E. So if I use that formula for mechanical advantage, it will say here MA for mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. They used L over e now what is our load our load is 15 times 10 to the power 3 over our effort is 9 times 10 to the power of 3 then it will give us uh, the mechanical advantage in this case so if we use them to calculate that the answer then becomes 15 times 10 to the power 3 over 9 times 10 to the power of 3 if we use that and press SD there is 1,6666 which is 1,67 after rounding off so it's 1,67 now there are no units for mechanical advantage you know why because on top here the load is measured in newtons over the effort is measured in newtons so the newtons cancel the newtons that's why you don't have units in that all right so that was the first question the second question they want us to calculate here the velocity ratio that's what they want us to calculate the velocity ratio now again as i say go to your formulas familiarize yourself with the formulas now when they are talking about the velocity ratio if I look here at the formula, as I said, some abbreviations also, they kind of confuse me, but we need to know that this formula is for velocity ratio, the dr or the vv, but the dr there, always remember, is for vr, the velocity ratio. So what is velocity ratio? It's se over sl, meaning 
distance moved by effort over distance moved by load. So if I use that formula to say V R is equal to S E over S L, just to check if ever I didn't do it the other way around. Yes, S E over S L, meaning distance moved by effort here distance moved by effort is 2,4 over distance moved by load is 0, 0,75 then it can give us in this case um, the velocity ratio which is 2,4 over 0, 0,75 again it's um, 3,2 now you'll be saying are there any units again for velocity ratio you need to leave units where they are supposed to be now look at this for velocity we are saying the distance moved by by effort which is meters over distance moved by the load which is meters the meters ca cancel the meters so there are no units for that that is the answer three comma two so guys that's how you approach this now let us move on to our next question and our next question is 5.4 we've just managed to be answering all that so if i can move to question 5.4 where now we are saying it's a good definition that you need to always know define pascal's law it's very important definition there to say um they usually ask it look at this it's two marks just to define pascal's law and then it says a confined fluid if you are using the definition it says a confined fluid transmits externally applied externally applied pressure so it says a confined fluid transmits externally applied pressure uniformly in all directions so a confined fluid transmits externally applied pressure uniformly in all directions what are the keywords there the first part is it uniformly it says supply a confined fluid transmits externally applied pressure uniformly in in all directions that is very key remember uniform the pressure is uniform and the pressure is in all directions that's what Pascal discovered that if pressure is applied in a fluid that pressure um, will be uniformly ex it will be ex it will be also um, forcing itself out of that confined space it can be a, a, a bottle or it can be anything that is confining that fluid so it is acting externally uniformly as well as in all directions i think you have seen kind of um some diagrams that they always use uh, they will use diagrams that show some arrows like this to say the fluid is um is got uniform pressure but it is uh, in all directions that is the part so let us move on to the last question here which is question um 5.5 so if we are looking at question 5.5 it says a diver has equipment that can only withstand 350 kilopascal of gauge pressure the moment remember they say kilo you multiply times 10 to the power of 3 just remember that when they say kilo multiply by 10 to the power of 3 or multiply by 1000 kilo means a thousand so it says a diver has an equipment that can only withstand pressure withstand 350 kilopascals of gauge pressure so gauge pressure there is the gp that is p of the gauge pressure it says determine the maximum depth that this diver and his equipment may dive in seawater while ensuring the protection of his or her equipment the density of seawater is that so they gave us some question some information three marks there so is the determine the maximum depth so depth there they are talking about the height that this diver and his equipment might dive in seawater ensuring the protection in other ways 
it, um, what is the depth or what is edge or how deep can he go before he can damage his equipment again as i said guys your formulas are very very important whenever you are uh, looking at this so if you go to our formulas and now we are looking at pressure so you look for the formula that connects pressure and if i check the formula that connects pressure there is the formula look at this formula here say p for pressure is equal to pgh where this p here is um the density of whatever substance that you're dealing with so that's what is density and g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height so p is i mean p is the p g h so if i write that formula uh just to erase it to say what we have on this one is p is equal to this p times g times h it's just p g h so what they're saying is the p here is the pressure the coach pressure that they're talking about and this other p is the density the g you know is the acceleration due to gravity which is equal to 9,8 that's where i was getting to say you need to know your information sheet there is the gravitational acceleration which is 9,8 that's what you must use and then lastly h here is the depth or how deep you can go so now if you're using that formula p is equal to um let's look at the information given first they told us that the diver has equipment that can only withstand 350 kilopascals of gauge pressure so that's our p so you can see that p here is equal to 350 kilopascals which is times 10 to the power of 3 pascals and they also gave us to say the density of seawater is 1025 so we have got that density of seawater which is 1025 so with that you have got your g which is 9,8 so we can find the height so p is equal to p g h so which is 350 times 10 to the power of 3 is equal to the density which is of seawater remember this value changes if they just say the density of water you are going to use the other value here this is the density of water if they're just talking about water but here they were specific they were talking about seawater hence they gave you the density is equal to that times 9,8 times the height now how do you find h remember what we don't want everything is multiplying so we have to divide which is the opposite of multiplication by what we don't want we don't want 1025 and we don't want 9,8 we only are interested in h hence you divide by that what you do on the left though you must also do on the right it's 1 comma 1025 times 9,8 then it will translate um, using that formula to the height so if I do that, it will be 350 times 10 to the power of 3 over 1025 times 9,8. And then this becomes 34,84. So I've got 34,84 times is equal to h i'm leaving out units intentionally but now we're talking about the height so therefore h is equal to 34,84 and what do you measure height in you measure height in meters distance remember is measured in meters so that is that so the diver can go as deep as 34,84 meters under sea level before his equipment can be in danger of um, exploding or his equipment can be damaged so that is that so that was the question here 
and now if you look at the total guys this is one of the sections as we always say that carries the most marks in engineering science and two it's got 17 marks most of them are most um topics are usually between 11 12 marks but when you look at mechanical drives this question usually carries the most marks so we have come to the end of our session guys as i said i'll do another lesson even up to four lessons on mechanical drives i'll see if time allows so that you can get as much information as possible because the more you revise on this section the better are the chances of you getting good marks on your final but again remember this question is dependent on understanding in full your formulas be very comfortable with your formulas apart from that know all your definitions and you are in a good space of getting all the marks here again remember to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so as well as turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified every time there's new videos remember also to comment all your comments guys are important come on guys don't just watch there and leave the channel like that comment tell us what you think tell us anything in terms of was the lesson beneficial to you tell us in terms of is there any other question you want us to do is there any other section you want us to do just give us some feedback so that we know behind this channel people who are benefiting as well as watching this channel thank you